It's not a bad fish either. What's going on guys? This is Gene Jensen. What I want to talk about is how to catch fish on a shaky head. <laughs> Alright, so what I want to begin with is I want to begin with a tackle. Uh, let's talk about the shaky head to start with. Alright, so this right here. I, now I've I've fished a ton of different shaky heads and I'm going to leave a list of all, of all of my favorite ones down in the description along with the rods and the reels, everything else. So you guys can go tackle warehouse and check those out. But this one right here, this one is a Warlock from Missile Baits. It's become one of my favorites for several reason, reasons. We'll go over that in a minute. But my very first shaky head was a, a spot remover from Buckeye Lures and I... I caught, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds of fish on that thing to begin with. I threw it for months and months and really did catch a lot of fish. It got hung up a lot. And and there's a few other things, reasons why I got away from it. But it's still a really, really good shaky head. Um, but uh, but when I'm looking for something to throw, finesse something I'm going to want to throw in the brush and that kind of stuff, I'm really particular about which ones I, I, I use. And what I look for in a shaky head is I look for this 60 degree line tie. You've got the you got the shank of the hook goes up and the line tie comes out at a 60 degree. Then the other thing I want is I want a horizontal uh, line tie. So I don't want it to go up and down this way. I want it to go across. So if you hold it like this, you can see through the eye of the hook. If you hold it like this, a vertical one, you can see through the eye of the hook this way. I don't like those. They get hung up a lot. And I'm gonna explain why. What happens is you get the you tie the knot here and your your jig head goes up over top of the the brush and when it has this flat eye that goes into a flat surface on the on the jig head it'll sit there and you can shake it on the limb but if it has a, a horizontal line tie it will roll over and this will not shake right and nine times out of ten you're going to get hung up so it gets hung up a lot in the brush um so that's kind of what I look for. And also another thing I pay attention to is one of the reasons why I stopped fishing the, uh, the spot remover was between the little peg that you that you put the, the soft plastic on and the eye and the tip of the hook. On a quarter ounce, which I used a lot, the hook was too small. It was a three-aught hook and it really needed to be a four or five-aught. And so I missed a lot of fish or skinned hook a lot of fish. And that's one of the things you look for. If you're skin hooking, which is it's just barely pick you know barely into the skin inside the fish's mouth whether you catch them or not but if you're skin hooking a fish on a shaky head it nine times out of ten is because your hook is too small for the size of your jig head now when i'm choosing the the, the weight of a jig head it or of a shaky head I, I usually go either eighth or quarter ounce i rarely ever throw a 16th i just can't feel it well enough to be able to even with a, a, a nice spinning rod it's for me, I just don't like the feel of it. So I like to fish either an eighth or a quarter. So some of the other shaky heads that I'll, I like to use, and I don't have any in the boat with me, but is a round ball shaky head. Again, it's got to have that 60 degree line tie. A really good one is a Picasso shakedown. I love that thing. I've won two tournaments on it. Um, it's a really good, a really good shaky head. And then the other one is a football style shaky head that I tend to fish around hard bottom and rocks and things like that it just stays upright and and works really really good so but for most of the most of the time I'm throwing the warlock the rod that I like to use is a spinning rod of course it fights better it's better on light line and you're fishing this on fairly light line this one right here this is an envy black but it, it what I look for is I want something between a six eight and a seven foot two medium fast action rod I don't want a medium heavy I just feel like it's too stiff you tend to work the bait too much with that stiff rod maybe a medium light if you're fishing a quarter or an eighth ounce or if you like to fish those sixteenth ounce you just it's just feel matter as as far as i'm concerned it's just feel but anyway so it's a 2000 or 3000 series or size reel or 20 or 30 depending on what your uh, what company you buy this is an axiom from 13 fishing i've got cigar uh 20 pound test braid on on as a main line on the spool and then i have it connected with an fg knot let's see if i can get that fg knot to show we got it connected with this fg knot and it's connected to i think i've got 10 pound test fluorocarbon on here some abrasex fluorocarbon i'm fishing around these stumps is where i'm catching these fish so it's got to have some good quality fluorocarbon but if you know it, it, 
if if you a budget's a thing, Seaguar's got some really good line. It's called uh, Basics. It's ten dollars a spool. It's really good. It's tough as nails, just not as abrasion resist, as resistant as a Brazex. But uh, but let me think of anything else I'm missing. Oh, soft plastics. So with a shaky head, I keep it pretty simple. I like to use straight tail worms, and so I use trick worms any kind of a seven inch worm all the way down to a little finesse worm but this is what i'm throwing today is just a zoom little zoom trick worm in in avocado one of my favorite colors just got a little bit of red flake in, in green pumpkin is what it is and uh but in the spawn when they're like right now they are up against these stumps they're spawning and i don't bed fish so much but i don't mind catching them if i you know i like catching them when i don't see them and so i'll flip these all these trees and if i get bit i get bit you know i'm not i know they're spawning i know that's where the fish are but i'm not going to actively go sight fishing but um i forgot where i was going to going with that so but during the spawn one of my favorite baits to throw on a shaky head is actually a a tiny lizard a zoom little tiny lizard i think they're like four inches three or four inches but that tends to be it's it's real easy to throw on a shaky head if it, it gets bit like crazy just flip it around the bushes and that kind of stuff so now let's talk about how to put put your soft plastics on a shaky head all right so first thing pretend that this is one that's got a, a plastics keeper on the shank of the hook and not a little screw lock. Okay, that's what we're going to pretend right now. I know it's tough for some of you guys. <laughs> but anyway, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to put, if it has that, that keeper on, this, on the shank, we're going to run the hook down the tip and tip of the worm and come out. And then we're going to come over top of the keeper and rotate. And then I'm going to look and see what side, what, uh, where the worm's going to go or where the hook's going to go in the worm and i go and i just tug just like this i don't want that hook to come out they you're gonna you're gonna set the hook pretty hard with this spinning rod and you're gonna get that nice light wire hook to penetrate through that through that worm so i wouldn't worry too much about that but that's what it's going to look like if it doesn't have that little that little screw lock now if it does have a screw lock a lot of times these straight tail worms have a real pointy head i make it flat just bite a little bit of it off okay and you just put it on Press down and start turning. Turn until it gets to the jig head and then flat side down. Same thing, lay it alongside. Look for where that hook's gonna go in and then just tug on it. Now, some soft plastics have, hard to talk with that in my mouth. Some soft plastics have, are really, really stiff. Um, and so if they're real stiff, this is not, Zoom is not, but if they're really stiff, another trick is to take and punch that hook through and create a hole for that hook to come come through when you set the hook and you'll be able to set it a whole lot better and a whole and, and you'll just get more hook sets with that thick stiff plastic and i can't think of any brand off the top of my head but you'll know when you squeeze it but that's it that's how you hook it up tie it on with a if you're using fluorocarbon use a, an improved clinch knot is what i use most of the time i try to stay away from palomar knots they tend to burn the fluorocarbon a little bit more any kind of a cinch style knot works really good with fluorocarbon all right now let's take this sucker and go out and go fishing all right I'll go ahead and apologize for the wind <laughs> not much i can do about it but uh it's gonna be a little bit of wind noise but that's okay all right so let's talk about what a shaky head isn't first of all it is not a bait that you cover a lot of water with it is a finesse slow move along the bank one thing at a time technique so don't go trying to cover vast amounts of water with a shaky head um, as fast as you can it just doesn't work that way so what it is it is a, a, a lure or it's a technique in which you can pinpoint exact cast exactly where you want to fit cast to so right now i'm throwing against stumps and against logs and into brush piles and you know sometimes into rocks and into a a hard spot and and working that one spot out really really thoroughly and what it's really good for is say you're fishing a tournament or you're not fishing a tournament you find an area that's got a bunch of fish and you're catching them on a crankbait or a chatterbait or some type of a moving bait and the bite dies pick up a, before you leave 
pick up a shaky head, throw it into that same area, and you will be amazed at how many more fish you catch. It is a mop-up lure. And it's also something that you can use year round. It works really good in the winter time in brush piles and on rocky points and deep and shallow. And it's just, it's a good all around bait to get to know and to figure out the best way to fish it. So let's talk about the technique. One of the big things you gotta understand, it's not just a shaky head. I know it's the name of it, but you don't have to shake it all the time. A lot of times it's let it sit still or just hop it or just hop it in a couple of shakes and that kind of stuff. You got to play around with that kind of stuff. So one thing I forgot to mention earlier is your length of your leader on your on your rod. I because I use an FG knot, I really don't care about how long my leader is. It can go into the spool. It's just it, an FG knot, it, the way it's tied, you don't get damage to that fluorocarbon when it runs through the guides. And so it really doesn't matter how long your leader is. Now, when you, when you, if you tie like a, a double uni or an Albright or Alberto knot, part of the fluorocarbon, the, the fluorocarbon is exposed in, the, in that knot. And so what will happen is it passes, as it passes through the guides, it will damage that fluorocarbon. So it's got a shelf life and it's not a very long one. And so let me show you what I do. When I am gonna, if I do tie a double uni or anything else other than a, 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 a FG knot, I make sure that when I'm about to cast, that that knot is above this guide, so it's somewhere up. I had a little bug crawling on the back of my neck. It's it's above this guide right here is what I make sure. And and the reason for that is this is the guide that beats your fluorocarbon up the most. The other ones will a little bit, but this is the one that will destroy your knot. And so make sure that your knot is above this, the big guide before you make that cast and you'll be just fine. All right, so let's talk about how to fish it. Now, like I said, it's a slow technique. It's one of those things where you get it down into the cover or you know onto the spots you want and you just sit there and soak it and shake it and soak it and shake it and then work it really, really slow and thoroughly through that spot. So you just throw out past your target, well past your target, let it sink to the bottom, okay? When it settles down and stops and gets to the bottom, I'm gonna shake it a little bit just in case it passed something on the way down. I'm just gonna shake it just to get, see if I can get a good bite on one that, that was close to it or that it passed. Now the key to this and the reason I love a 60 degree line tie is I want to be able to pull it up to whatever that cover is a rock or whatever i keep saying what it is but whatever that cover is and i want to be able to shake it get it snagged on there just enough to be able to shake it a little bit but then when i pull tight it pops over top of whatever that is whether it be a stick or whatever so that's kind of what i'm doing so you cast out let's do that one more time cast out well past your target Let it get down to the bottom, you know, and if it's 26, 30, 40 feet, feet deep, it's gonna take a while to get to the bottom and you're gonna to have to give it line. But I'm fishing in about five feet of water right now and I've got an eighth ounce shaky head on. Okay, and I drag it up to that, to the edge of it, and I just start shaking. And I like to, when it's, when I'm snagged on something, I shake it on a tight line, but just enough to shake it, not enough to pull it over top of the, whatever it's snagged on. Then I pull it over top, let it fall on the bottom, and I pull it up again and I shake a little bit. So if it's shake, if you're on the bottom and you want to shake it, it's, you want to have a little bit of line on the, uh, on the water. You want to shake it on a slack line. Slack line. But if you're not, you want to shake it on a, on a tight line if it's hung on something. So Now the hook set is critical. Now you do not want to set the hook to the side. The fastest way to lose a fish is to hook it on a shaky head is to hook, set the hook to the side. You want it straight up as you can get it, either over one of your shoulders or up over top of your head, but you want a straight up and down hook set and you'll get them most of the time. So critical, never to the side. I used to fuss at Ryan, I used to fuss at, J at Jordan when they'd set the hook like a Carolina rig on a shaky head and they lose the fish every time. So that's kind of what I'm, what I'm talking about. Straight up and strong. Let the drag work for you. You want to drag fairly stiff. Man, it's getting windy. And one of the toughest conditions to fish a shaky head in is high winds because you can't feel the bite. <laughs>
any kind of bottom bait sucks in the wind. So I'm gonna try to catch one more fish before I, I end this video, but man, it's the wind makes it tough. I'm gonna tuck, tuck back in this pocket, see if I can catch one more fish. Well, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Um, I gotta hit the road, it's spring break. Kids wanna go have some fun, but uh, I hope you learned something about a, a, a shaky head. If you like this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. But like I always say, be sure to introduce somebody to fishing. Introduce them to my channel. Let me help you teach them how to fish. More importantly, get out on the water. Go out and catch some fish and have a great day. We'll see you.